morning's Mass is being celebrated in the happy repose of the soul of Joseph Macaluso. The Lord chose him for himself as a high priest, and opening his treasure house, made him rich in all good things. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. We were set to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in your providence raised up Pope St. Pius V in your church, that faith might be safeguarded and more fitting worship be offered to you. Grant this through his intercessions, that we may participate in your mysteries with lively faith and fruitful charity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, some Jews from Antioch and Iconium arrived and won over the crowds. They stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples gathered around him, he got up and entered the city. On the following day, he left with Barnabas for Derbe. After they had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable number of disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. They strengthened the spirits of the disciples and exhorted them to, to persevere in the faith, saying, it is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed presbyters for them in each church and with prayer and fasting commended them to the Lord in whom they had put their faith. Then they traveled through Pisidia and reached Pamphylia. After proclaiming the word at Perga, they went down to Italia. From there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had now accomplished. And when they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. Then they spent no little time with the disciples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your, your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious, glorious splendor of your kingdom. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. Your, your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom making known to men your might and glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages, and your dominion endures through all generations. Your, your friends may know, O Lord, Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. May my mouth speak the praise of the Lord, and may all flesh bless his holy name forever. Your, your friends, friends may know, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Christ had to suffer and to rise from the dead and so entered into his glory. Alleluia, Alleluia. Says his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. 
Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You have heard me tell you I'm going away, and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice in that I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. I will no longer speak much with you, for the ruler of the world is coming. He has no power over me, but the world must know that I love the Father, and that I do just as the Father has commanded me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus' words to his disciples in the gospel today is peace, my peace I give you. Now again, this gospel passage is taken shortly before Jesus would suffer his own death. And he's preparing his disciples for this. And he wants to assure them that he is the one who can bring peace and give them peace. But even so, when he sees that, we're going to see that he does so by allowing himself to die for our sins. And the purpose for, the, for his dying for our sins to save us is to reconcile. That's how you bring peace, through reconciliation, through that kind of forgiveness, which is where you know, God is calling us to not only to continue to reconcile us with God, as Jesus did for all of us, but to continue that reconciliation, and of course, he's given us the beautiful sacraments to do so now, but also to find ways in order to be able to reconcile with one another. So today we celebrate the feast of Pope Pius V. We probably don't know a whole lot about Pope Pius V. He lived in the 14th century. He was raised as a very poor boy and really just worked as a shepherd up until he was about 14 years old, went into the Dominican order, taken in, he was called Brother Michel at that time. And then he, in the Dominican order, then he was eventually ordained as a priest, was educated there. He, he taught philosophy and theology, and he eventually became the prior for and the master of the path, several Dominican houses. Now, we all know about, when we hear the word inquisition or inquisitors, we always know about them. But they actually came about sometime around the 13th century, and there were inquisitors actually placed in all of the di in dioceses. And the purpose for the inquisitors was to try to, you know, fret out any of the heresies that were going on at the time. And there were a lot. There were a lot of misunderstandings in the early church as to what is behind all this, and people were going and trying to come up with their own way of doing things. And of course, this is also coinciding with the Protestant Reformation, and then eventually the Council of Trent. And so to do this, the, the church wanted to ensure that the proper understanding of the faith is going to be there in all of the dioceses. And originally it was done by priests, and then for the most part, it was taken over by the Dominican orders only because of the amount of education that each one of the Dominicans would have and an understanding of the faith. And so, as such, he was named as one of the local inquisitors. And because of his, you know, the reputation of being able to do so, that one of the leading cardinals at the time brought him to Rome in order to be able to be the inquisitor there. You know, we still do have inquisitors in our church, okay? They don't call them that anymore. It's also, it's actually the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith to ensure that our faith is held. So that is really still the same office that they all fall under the inquisitors then too. And so he did so, and then this cardinal that brought him then, he became Pope Paul the Fourth, okay? And then, of course, he just continued on doing that. Eventually, you know, even though he was very, very, uh, you know, good and intelligent and whatever, he, he was a little bit relaxed. You know, he wanted more, you know, more punishment, more, more of this and that to go along with those who were buying that. But eventually, he was able to go back to his own diocese because he was ordained a bishop by then. But then, who succeeded Paul IV was Pius V. Okay, 
he became Pope then too. He was the one who took on such the monumental reforms of, uh, of, of, uh, of the Council of Trent, but he also brought along with him so much of the beauty of the Dominican order itself too. And so when he went there, he really instituted about going about and seeing where the poor were in the diocese. And he, in the reforms that he wanted, he, there was so much laxity and things like that. Even when bishops were named, sometimes bishops were named and they never even stepped foot in their own diocese. They were just, you know, just ruling from afar. And then the orders are, you know, you're a bishop, that's where you be. You be with your people. You see what's going on there, and that's exactly what he would do as the Pope. He would go and he would visit the very parishes, and he would go to the places where the poor people were then too. He made tremendous strides in so many of the reforms in all of the church then too. So reforms in the liturgy, reforms in the uh, prayers and the breviary and things like that. And yes, there was that constant battle then too of so many things going on in the world. The Inquisition, as it comes about, which had so many negative implications then too. You know, it, there was a, a, a real fight against a lot of the Islamic type of persistence there too. He was able to go and to negotiate then with Spain, and it wasn't called Italy, but it was called Venice at that time, or just the area of Venice, that they would combine their forces under prayer, under the mantle of the Blessed Mother, to be able to, you know, even though it was not an even battle, they were far under the underdogs. But the Battle of Lepanto, which we now know is, you know, the, we call it the, you know, Our Lady of Lepanto or Our Lady of the Rosary. The people prayed for Mary's intercession to be able to guide and lead us there then too. And she did. And she allowed victory then too to help Catholicism to be able to stay where it was and not allow for a lot of the other destruction that would have come about otherwise in the way that the world was at that time. He did so much good in trying to come about that at that point. And his papacy was only six years, six years, but in six years he showed what that type of peace and where the truth is. And that's what Jesus was trying to teach his disciples about. Realizing the peace is by following me and sharing what I have. See what I do. I give myself at all to be able to reconcile with God. And that's what we're called to today. We're called to be able to live that peace by seeking the truth and spreading that truth with others. Knowing the truth is with God, we first and foremost need to reconcile ourselves with God. And then we need to be able to find that reconciliation within ourselves as well so that we can go out and reconcile with one another. It's not an easy task to do it on a, a, an individual basis, yet alone on a global basis, but this is where it all starts. And we pray for the intercession of Pope Pius V, who serves as a great example of how we try to bring reconciliation in the midst of so much chaos. It's still a lot of chaos out there. We still need a lot of forgiveness, and a lot of healing, and a lot of peace come to the Eucharist and ask Jesus to help us and to guide us in that way. With confidence that the Father hears our prayers, let us lift our needs and the needs of the world as we pray. For the Church, may God grant her the grace to be a sign of unity and peace to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For leaders of nations, may God guide them towards justice and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families divided by hurt and conflict, may God show them the path to reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, may God grant us the wisdom and courage to share Jesus with others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died. Remember especially the intention of today's Mass, Joe Macaluso. May they soon come to rest in the eternal joy and peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions, which we hold in the silence of our hearts.
Let us pray to you. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence among us. Hear these prayers that we offer today through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in the Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept the sacrifice from your people, we pray, O Lord, and make what is offered to your glory in honor of St. Pius V, a means to our eternal salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up by the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. On the festival of St. Pope Pius V, you bid your church rejoice. And so, too, you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with, the company of the company, with, and so with the company of the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, found of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon the one who do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave him thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. We give thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church <clears throat> spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Alfred, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Pius, St. Elizabeth the Hungry, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the same as men, performed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us all for each other a sign of Christ's peace. Amen. The Lamb of God. Take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am now worthy that you should enter into my room, but I want to say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who are unable to be with us today or unable to receive the Eucharist at this time, I'll now pray a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament, and I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. <coughs> Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. <coughs> Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The good shepherd has, shepherd has laid down his life for his sheep, I believe.
Let's pray. May the sacraments we have received, O Lord our God, stir up in us that fire of charity which the blessed Pope Pius V burned ardently as he gave himself unceasingly for your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Have a good day, everyone.